Tonight we're in the kitchen with Scott and John Shanzy of Bell, and um, can you tell us a little bit about Bell? Yeah, um, it was something that existed before we got involved that changed dramatically when we did. Um, changed it from sort of coffee shop over to the restaurant that it is now and bakery, I suppose. And um, kind of an all day thing, neighborhood spot, something that you can feel comfortable in uh, whenever. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, and Sunday brunch. So a little bit of everything that everybody can get, or a little something that everybody can get. Uh, yeah, any time of the day. Uh, yeah, but you, you have to get there early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to get those cinnamon rolls yeah, and yeah. donuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's um, a sort of um, display of what John and I like doing. Um, me baking and him cooking. Yeah, and, and like dish. and what we like eating and. Yeah, what we like eating. Yeah, and the dishes that we do and sandwiches that we make are essentially what we want to eat and yeah. what we think is uh, the best version of the things that we do. Good. So tell us about what you're cooking tonight. What product you're using yeah. and what you're gonna cook. We got uh, short ribs, the Patterson short ribs from you guys. Uh, I was really excited to see it on there because I hadn't had this one before. Um, I've been buying stuff from you guys for six years or so, um, and I haven't had this one, so this is what we chose, this gigantic, awesome short ribs, and it's uh, a recipe that's, like, well-suited for home cooking. Um, you know, there's no, yeah, there's no real, like, tricks or chefiness, like, knowledge-wise that you require to have to cook one of these. It's, like, very easy with a uh, food processor in a crock pot and uh, one pan, you know, so the dish game is an easy cleanup. And if you don't and, have this, just chop it all up and it's going to work fine. Yeah, and you can set it, you know, like uh, you could, we'll walk you through the steps, but you can set it at 9 o'clock the night before and uh, have it just like slow cook until dinner the next day. Um, so it's completely, it's about 10 minutes of active time and you know, depending on how you set the, the crock pot, what your preference is, or how much time you have, or how long your shift is, um, it's very hands-off, and you just come back home to something that's done and ready to, you know. Something like you get in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to start? All right. Let's do it, yeah. So you just do a little garlic, and then... One of the chef chefy tricks I'd say is to put a little salt in there and it'll keep it from um, sticking to the sides. Um, yeah. And you have to stick at all. And, um, so that first. Then we'll do the carrot. You know, you could just one carrot, one big one's fine, or like the little small ones with the tops is fine. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, you know, one of my favorite chefs is like, says uh, if it was supposed to be in little cubes, it'd grow that way. So you, it's not necessary to, you know, perfect knife cuts is like, you know, for people that have time for that. And uh, owning a place, you don't necessarily have time for that. But. You just want small to medium sized little cubes. And then we'll do onion and celery. Was Jenny, Jenny Peterson says, uh, we're not making the Mona Lisa here. Yeah, we're just trying to make something that just tastes trying to good. Make something delicious here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got the pan going here, just on medium high, just getting ready for the short cooking press. And if you noticed, I did reserve some of the carrot. Uh, that'll come back later. Um, I like to have like you know, in these simple dishes like this, like textures are still nice instead of everything being mushy. You know. Um, So I'll just put this straight into, 
the uh, the crock pot here. And since it cooks so long, you don't have to necessarily worry about like something tasting extra garlicky if that's not your thing. But this, that's definitely my thing. So. <laughs> Um, and then we'll just do some celery and these big cuts are fast and uh, you don't have to worry about like I said making small ones so. you can just do this so quick on a weeknight yeah put it together Tuesday come back Monday. you want to take the stems off those mm -hmm. mushrooms for me this goes in too. Sorry, it's right behind me. Is there anything in the crock pot or was it just, okay. Just, just Nothing at all, it's on preheated. Um, and then the kind of beauty of this thing, it's just, it's all gonna end up as one nice kind of. Homogenous. Beautiful mess. <laughs> yeah. Get you a bowl for this. Some bread. All right. All right. Do the same thing with the mushrooms and the salt. Since they have so much water in them. More than halfway done. <laughs> nice. Right. You want to salt and pepper or salt, salt those things? Nice coat, pretty big piece of meat, but uh, if you're going to salt less or more, go less long cooking time, you can correct it at the end. It's very unfortunate to end up with something very salty and it's hard to correct, and uh, it's better to play safe. But this big piece of meat can really take it. Sear this thing on all sides. Seems like a lot, but there's a lot going into it. <laughs> I'll just turn this on at this point. Pan's pretty hot. You got what you need in there? Yeah. Go right ahead, man. Go for it. Yeah. Alright. So these are getting seared, so not olive oil. High temp olive, high temp oil, grapeseed, sunflower, something like that. Not a little, not a lot. And sear away. Good. Yeah. All right. Nice. So we got carrots, onions, celery, garlic, mushrooms, garlic. Yeah. All just quick chopped up in the food processor into the crock pot. Yep. Sear the ribs, all sides. Yep. Set it in there. This is the one thing that you might need to go to like a. JM stock for that's who we would highly highly recommend we don't really I don't think there's actually anyone else that we would recommend so just go by and ask them for some kind of beef stock or alternatively you can just get beef demi and then add the same volume and water uh, and, and we just your local butcher will have an answer for you in that department yeah and we'll just pour, pour that straight in there and it looks a little thick to me so I'll put some water too. It looks so good. Yeah. Looks like soup. Soup, yeah. Yeah. 
So it's pretty good. <clears throat> They're going to cook for a really long time, so getting some color on them now, don't worry too much about getting too dark or anything like that. It's going to just make the whole thing richer overall. Yep. A lot more complex, beefy flavors. Yep. first started cooking ribs for something that intimidated me, I'm sure for you as well, and I yeah. think for most people, ribs is a, um, can be intimidating to go uh, to go for. You might think that they might end up dry, or you're going to overcook them, or they're going to be tough, or something like that. And um, You start with a great product, something like this. You set it into a low, slow cook. It's gonna work. And just be Don't patient. Don't worry yeah. about it. Be patient. <laughs> Let it go. If you think that it's not ready, it's probably not. Or if you think that it's overcooked, it's probably not. And then you <laughs> can just let it go more and more and more until it's just uh, fall off the bone. And uh, anybody can achieve that. Really. Patience really is the key. And with this, it kind of takes away. It it removes the small window of nailing it. Like. If, like at the restaurant, we would typically probably braise this in a very large pan in an oven set to like 350 or something. Um, and, um, but uh, that's just because we have so much volume. Um, this is pretty much the same thing. It's just, you know, low and slow, and you don't have to worry about your water evaporating. It's on a timer, it's all electric. You know, um, so if you were gonna cook this ahead of time, would you do it in the morning? I think yeah. you could go both ways. You could cook it, you could, um, something like this might seem like I don't want to do that in the morning, you know? Um, so I can understand, uh, I'll just put them in now to put them in in the evening and just let it go long, slow. Uh, and it'll be okay through the next day, especially for something as big as this. If you get a smaller rib, maybe let it just go 10, 12 hours. Um, but generally you can adjust your crock pot high and low. And I yeah. say, um, if you're gonna do it uh, the morning of, maybe go high. If you wanna go the night ahead, go low. And uh, they're gonna be okay either way. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these, what I did, uh, ahead of time I put them in last night after we ate dinner and did all the dishes um, and I just set it to low and when I came back from work they were perfectly ready the next day so at 4 30 or so um, yeah so then we just put the top on there you guys want to take a little peek at this is that, is that something I bring it over here to you take hold on it's plugged in, dog. Yep, yep. Is that uh, visible? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, looks, that looks delicious. Looks nice. Yeah. Very easy. Easy is key. Part of the recipe is unplugging it for 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep, and then we just let it go. Go watch a movie. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Not cook. Not do dishes. None of that. Yeah, you got one pan to clean so far. I guess in the food processor. Yeah. Pretty yeah. easy. Yeah. All right, we're back at the end of the thing, uh, and this is what they end up looking like. Uh, like you want to see that jiggle, you want to see the exposed bone here, like the meat pulling away from this bone, and uh, that the jiggle top is jiggle. Key. The jiggle is key. Yeah, that's what you you really want to see that. Uh, if it's not loosened up, more time. Yeah. Don't worry. 
If it's too loose, that's fine. <laughs> it's still going to be really good. Yeah. So then we just take like a little bit of the, this is what the sauce ends up looking like with those mushrooms. It really, it really, really thickens up. And uh, with that carrot that I mentioned earlier, saving some of, that's what I like to like, maybe the last two hours or so, I'll cut some carrot up, you know, in the similar ch size chunk that I did before I put it in the food processor. Uh, and then throw that in there too. I think nice cooked carrots are a staple of any. And that's, that doesn't need to be in there. If you don't yeah. have time. Just grind them up and they get going and put them in there. It's just like, you don't need to do this, but it's something that adds contrast if you're home and you're able to tend to it. Yeah, you can put, you can, not, yeah. you can add anything to this. So you could use parsnips or potatoes or whatever you really, whatever you have available. Uh, and then we just, yeah. we put some chopped parsley in there. Decent amount. I've found that at Bell, it needs something if, green. if you come in and somebody says something like, oh, I love the salad dressing, or, or this uh, salsa berry is really nice, what did you guys do to it? And I, it's something that caught me off guard when I was around John cooking more, is just the use of herbs and how much uh, herbs and things like lemon juice can uh, make your dish taste so much better. Like, uh, a, a good amount of parsley and lemon juice can make you say like, oh, so this is what they do. Like, this is how they yeah, do. that's it so fresh. So that's nice. the secret. The secret is salt, lemon juice, and parsley, fresh herbs. Fresh yeah. herbs, yeah. So, a lot of mushrooms, too. And we'll just ladle that in there. And, uh, you know, I think a good recommendation is uh, to serve this with, like, grits or polenta or mashed potatoes or... Uh, yeah, super crusty bread. That's what we we eat it with. You kind of want it to be like a, a mountain. You know what I mean? If I'm gonna do this, I'm at home. I would probably come home to this already done, and then pretty quickly boil four to one water to polenta. Boil the water, whisk it in, go. When it's done, add a little butter, and put that in the bottom of your bowl. Ribs and veggies on top. Yeah. At Bell, we do bread because that's what we do. Yeah, and, uh, spend a lot of time doing it. At home, it might not be as easy to just whip up a loaf of sourdough, <laughs> but it is quarantine, so people are doing that these days. Yeah. So just go for it. Yeah, <laughs> and then we just put some fresh chives on there too. So yeah, big piece of bread right on the side. Boom. Voila. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah, and that's it. You all are going to be having a short rib dish at Bell. Yeah, it starts, it on the menu? starts tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. tomorrow being the first of October, and then we'll run that till uh, I don't know till it's lamb season in the spring or something. Yeah, it's cool. It's cooling down. Got your bread. It's cooling down now. So in the summer we did light dishes, uh, and now that it's cooling down, we like saucier dishes, crusty bread, loaves. Uh, Sourdough loaves, something to scoop up all this nice sauce that this nice piece of meat has rendered off over yeah. the day that it's been cooking. This one is a polenta loaf that uh, our friend Anthony from uh, CNO brought back from us from uh, Evram at Subrosa in Richmond. Yeah. Um, it's got fresh milled corn in it. They do really, really cool stuff, and Scott and I are big, uh, big fanboys of theirs. Big fans of the polenta bread. We do yeah. one at Bell as well. And highly recommend it for a dish like this. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Simple. A lot of fun, very simple, uh, easy to do at home. Great. Right. And now we're going to have a taste. Yay! Yeah. So it just falls apart. Oh, uh, look at that. Yeah, it's yes, nice and pink. It just cooked perfectly. Like that, yeah. Yes. And I barely, I didn't really cook it, actually. The crock pot cooked it, you know? Mm -hmm. Tear some bread. There you go. Set this one for you. Take that. Like that. Oh. Mm. Delicious. You want oh, some? Yeah. Yes, absolutely delicious. Let go, monkey. I love it. So easy. Uh, so easy. Yes. 
You want, you want some? Yeah. You want to try it, Thomas? <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you all so very much. We really, really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I know everybody at home is going to be anxious to try this. Yep, we're happy to be involved. Yeah. We're yep. excited. And if you're in Charlottesville, please go by and see these guys. Yep. You will um, be really excited. Yeah. <laughs>